In this video, we're going to take a look at solving linear congruences using the inverse. Before we do a proof with mathematical induction, let's talk about what the process is for mathematical induction. Mathematical induction is like a ladder with an infinite number of rungs. And the thought process here is that if I can prove that I can get to the first step of my ladder, and then I can prove that if I can get to the first step of my ladder, if I can get to any rung of the ladder, including the first, then I can get to the next rung, and then that tells me I can get to the next rung, and that to the next rung, and that to the next rung, then I can get to any rung of the ladder that I want, and it's true for all rungs of the ladder. So what does that mean in terms of what we're going to do mathematically? Well, we're first going to prove a basis step. And the basis step says, I can get to the first rung of my ladder. I can verify that my propositional function, p of x, is true for whatever my first value is. Now notice I have written p of 1, but it's very possible, depending on your situation, that maybe your first value that you need to prove is that it's true for 3. So then p of 3 would be your basis step. From there, we have to verify that if p of k is true, then that implies that p of k plus 1 is true. So there's two parts that you're going to see me write. And any video that you watch, you should see any instructor write the inductive hypothesis. The inductive hypothesis says we're going to assume p of k is true. You will also see me write must show. And so a lot of instructors don't write what you must show and then at the end they say, here, this is true because I showed this. I like to be very explicit about it. I like to say, here's what I'm assuming is true. Because that's true, does that imply that p of k plus 1 is true? And if it's true that p of k implies p of k plus 1 and I can get to the first rung of my ladder, then I can get to every rung of my ladder. So my conclusion will be that whatever it is I'm trying to prove is true for all k that are positive integers. So let's take a look at our first example. For our first proof by induction, we're going to prove a summation formula that we've already used in this course, which is the summation as i goes from 1 to n of i is equal to n times n plus 1 divided by 2. So as you can see, that's exactly what I have here. But on the left side, instead of the summation, I've just written out the sequence of terms instead. And you'll see why in a little bit. When I start a proof by induction, I have to specify what it is that I'm trying to prove. So I have to tell what that p of n is equal to. So I'm going to assume p of n, or let, not assume, I'm just going to let p of n represent 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way through n is equal to n times n plus 1 divided by 2. It's important that I do that step because that's saying here's what I'm trying to prove. So make sure that you are explicit about that step. Then I'm going to do my basis step. And the basis step, if you'll recall, says prove p of 1 is true. Prove I can get to the first rung of the ladder. Now, in this case, p of 1 would actually be 1, right? We're actually trying to prove that I can use 1 and find the solution. So p of 1 would be 1 equals 1 times 1 plus 1 over 2. And I have to just verify that's true. On the left side, I have 1. On the right side, I have 1 times 2 over 2. And so I get 1 equals 1, which is true. So I've proved the basis step. So that should always be a super duper easy step because the first step, the basis step, is always just math. It's just plugging something in. So you don't have to prove anything. You're just plugging in something and verifying that it's true. Now the next step is where things get tricky. That is the inductive step. And remember the inductive step 
says, assume that P of K is true, prove that it implies P of K plus one. So there are two parts to this. I'm going to start by writing the inductive hypothesis. Yes, you always have to write that. The inductive hypothesis is going to be exactly what P of N was, except we're going to plug K in instead. So it's super duper easy. So the inductive hypothesis is that one plus two plus three all the way through K is equal to K times K plus one divided by two. So I'm assuming P of K is true. Now, this is the part that I said not all instructors show, but for me, this is a really important step because this is my roadmap. This tells me what am I trying to get to. So I have to show P of K plus one is true. So let's rewrite the inductive hypothesis as P of K plus one. So I have to show one plus two plus three all the way through plus K plus k plus one, which would be my next term in the sequence, is equal to, and then again, k, I have to add one because I'm doing k plus one. So this is k plus one, and then this was k plus one, but I have to do k plus one plus one, all divided by two, which of course means that I'm showing that k plus one, and this would be k plus two over two. So this is where I'm trying to get to. And again, that's why this step is important to me because it gives me my roadmap. Where am I trying to end up? So now I'm going to start the induction part of this proof. I start with the inductive hypothesis. One plus two plus three plus all the way through K. And remember, I'm trying to show that this is true. So I'm going to then add K plus one to this side. And then on the right side, I have K times K plus one over two. And whatever I did to the left side of an equation, I have to do to the right side of an equation. So that's my first step is I'm adding K plus one to each side. So as we can see, the left side here is exactly what I wanted. When I said this is what I must show, I have exactly what I must show. The right side, however, is not. So on the right side, that's where I'm going to do all of my work. So let's see what we can do here. This is K times K plus one over two. And I want to add this to it. So I'm just going to multiply by two on top and on bottom. So plus two times K plus one over two. And the reason I'm going to do that is so then of course I can write it as a uh, common, sorry, write it as a fraction with a common denominator. So I could of course foil, I'm sorry, distribute the K, K squared plus K and then distribute the two. But what I know is essentially this is one big fraction now with a plus in between and a denominator of two. So what I have is factoring by grouping where one of my factors is K plus one and the other factor is K plus two because that was their common factor. Both K and two have a common factor of K plus one. So this is my simplified solution. Now, did I do what I wanted to do? Yes, I did. I've proved that by adding K plus one to each side, I did end up where I wanted to end up. So I'm done with my proof. So quite often at the end of the proof, you'll see people then summarize because this is true and this is true. Then I've shown that this is true. And I've already done that by giving you this, my must show. So what I've done is I've now shown, so therefore P of N is true for all N that are positive integers. 
Let's do another proof using induction. In this case, we want to show that for all non-negative integers n, 1 plus 2 plus 2 squared all the way up through 2 to the n is equal to 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1. So one thing I want to point out is that we're dealing with all non-negative integers. So notice they didn't say positive integers, which means we're starting at 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. So n is greater than or equal to 0. That's going to come into play when we do our basis step. Before we do that basis step, let's take a look at what we're trying to show. This is obviously 2 to the 0 which makes sense because we just talked about the fact we're starting at zero. This is two to the first and this is two to the second. So we can see that in fact we were correct in saying n is greater than or equal to zero. So now remember our first step last time was that we have to specify what is p of n. So we're going to let p of n represent that one plus two plus 2 squared all the way up through 2 to the n is equal to 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1. Then we're going to start with our basis step. And remember our basis step is to prove p of 1. Now be careful, remember the basis step just says, hey, prove the very first element. And we just talked about the first element being 0. So I need to show that p of 0 is true. So p of 0 would be 2 to the 0 is equal to 2 to the 0 plus 1 minus 1. Well, 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the 0 plus 1 is 2 to the first, which is 2 minus 1 is 1. So I've shown the basis step to be true. Now let's look at our inductive step. And recall our inductive step says assume pk show that implies p of k plus 1. So we start by writing our inductive hypothesis, which is exactly what my p of n statement is with k's instead, every single time. So 1 plus 2 plus 2 squared all the way up through 2 to the k is equal to 2 to the k plus 1 minus 1. And then again, the part that your textbook or other instructors likely won't do is put the what we need to show. So what I need to show is 1 plus 2 plus 2 squared plus 2 to the k plus 2 to the k plus 1 is equal to 2 to the k plus 1 plus 1 minus 1, which of course is 2 to the k plus 2 minus 1. So this is what I'm trying to get to. And now let's go ahead and go for it. So I'm going to start with my inductive hypothesis. 1 plus 2 plus 2 squared all the way up to 2 to the k. And what am I going to add to that? I'm going to add 2 to the k plus 1. And again, why did I add 2 to the k plus 1? Because I want the left side to be exactly what I'm trying to show. On the right side, again, I'm using the inductive hypothesis, 2 to the k plus 1 minus 1. And to be mathematically correct, I have to then add exactly what I added to the left side, 2 to the k plus 1. Now what am I going to do? Well, the left side's exactly as I want it, so I'm going to leave it just like that. The right side, what I have is obviously, again, this is where the algebra comes in. I've got 2 to the k plus 1, and I've got another 2 to the k plus 1, so I actually have two 2 to the k plus 1s minus 1. Well, what's 2, 2 to the k plus 1? Remember, if you have two values with the same base that you're multiplying, you can add the exponents together. Like if I had 3 squared times 3 to the 4th, that would be the same as 3 to the 6th. I can add the 2 plus the 4. 
That's all I'm going to do here. So 2 to the first and 2 to the k plus 1 would be 2 to the k plus 2, and I still have my minus 1. And so did I set out what I want? Did I do what I set out to do in the beginning? Yes, I did, again, because these two things match up. Therefore, I'm done, and I can say that P of N is true for all N greater than or equal to zero, where N obviously is an integer. So let's take a look at one that's a little bit harder. And this one's harder, not because it's a harder proof, but because I haven't given you what to prove. And so if I don't give you what to prove, it's up to you to conjecture what it is that I should be proving and then prove it. So it's really two parts. And so this is talking about the sum of the first n positive odd integers. So best idea here is to just start plugging and chugging and seeing if we can see a pattern. So we're going to look at it for n equals 1, for n equals 2, for n equals 3, n equals 4, and can we then justify that for n equals n? So for 1, obviously that just means the sum of 1, which is 1. For 2, that means the first two positive odd integers, so that's 1 plus 3 and 1 plus 3 is 4. For n equals 3, that means 3 integers, 1 plus 3 plus 5, which is 9. For 4, it's 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7, which is 16. And what I'm looking at is, is there a pattern? And this appears to be 1 squared, and 4 is 2 squared, and 3 is 3 squared, or 9, excuse me, is 3 squared. I was looking at this 3. And as we can see, what I'm ending up with down here seems to be n squared, which is fantastic because now I have an idea of what that sum will be. What I also need to look at is how would I write this in terms of n on this side? Because remember, I want this to be my statement that the sum of all of these values is equal to n squared. And so I have to look at what would I do with n to find the next integer. So to get 3 from 4, uh, I'm sorry, to get 3 from 2, to get 5 from 3, to get 7 from the 4 being that's the next integer that I'm adding means that I'm actually taking 2 times n, so 2 times 2 would be 4, minus 1 to get 3. 2 times 3 is 6, minus 1 to get 5. 2 times 4 is 8, minus 1 to get 7. So that is my formula. So obviously, that part wasn't super easy. This is going to end up being, when I do this on the next page, this is going to be my statement, p of n, is that 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus dot 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 plus 2n minus 1 is equal to n squared. So now that I have come up with, I've conjectured my summation formula, now I want to actually prove it. So now that I've done the work to come up with the formula that I think is right, I actually have to prove it. And so again, I'm going to start by just explicitly saying that p of n be the proposition that 1 plus 3 plus 5, et cetera, et cetera, all the way up to 2n minus 1 is equal to n squared. So I'm just explicitly saying that is true. And then I need to show my basis step. And remember, my basis step just is looking at the lowest value. And so if we're looking at this, we really started with n being a positive integer. And so that my basis step would be the lowest positive integer. So I have to prove that p of 1 is true. And what I can do then is say, well, that would be 1 equals 1 squared. And is that true? 
Yes, one equals one, therefore the basis step is proven. We'll do it that way, one equals one. The next step is the induction step or the inductive step. And remember that says, assume P of K is true, show P of K plus one is true. And again, I like to write it out explicitly and you have to write the inductive hypothesis. And my inductive hypothesis is that one plus three plus five, et cetera, et cetera, all the way up to two K minus one is equal to K squared. Because again, we're looking at P of K being true. Then I want to show, and again, I like to write this step so I know where I'm headed. I want to show that if I continued this and I added the next integer, and so the next integer would be two more than 2k minus one, which would be 2k plus one, I want to show that if I add that to the left side, then the right side will become k plus one squared. So that is what I'm trying to get to, is saying I'm going to add the next odd integer and I should end up with k plus one quantity squared as my solution. So now let's go about doing this. I have one plus three plus five, plus blah, 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 plus 2k minus one, which I know is true, and that is equal to k squared, which I know is true. And I also know that if I add something equal to each side, then the equation still holds. So I'm going to add 2k plus one to each side of the equation. So I haven't broken any mathematical laws. I've added something equal to each side. Now on the left side, this is exactly what I wanted. I have the same series or progression that I had before, and all I've done is now add 2k plus one, which is what I wanted to get to. And on the right side, I'm trying to see if that is in fact equal to k plus one quantity squared. And so what I'm looking at is I have three terms, k squared plus 2k plus one, and it looks like I can factor those. And if I factor, I'm looking for numbers that multiply to one that add to two, which is one and one. So this would actually be k plus one, k plus one. And of course that means that everything I have here, 2k minus one plus 2k plus one is equal to k plus one quantity squared because I had two of them. So I have in fact proved that to be true. Up next, we are going to continue proof of mathematical induction, but we're going to look at proofs of inequalities.